Split Sleeper Birth Provision The Split Sleeper Birth Rule allows drivers to break their required 10-hour off-duty time into two parts to extend their shifts. Drivers can adjust their schedules for longer trips or when waiting at a warehouse by taking different types of breaks, such as a short one followed by a long one or vice versa. You can use various break combinations, like 3 hours followed by 7 hours or 7 hours followed by 3 hours, and 2 hours followed by 8 hours or 8 hours followed by 2 hours. It's your choice whether to start with a short or long break. To meet the rule, combine at least 7 consecutive hours in the sleeper berth with up to 3 hours of time equivalent to off-duty before or after the sleeper berth time. This total must be at least 10 hours. The same principle applies if you're using an 8-hour sleeper berth combination with 2 hours of off-duty time. These breaks don't count against your 14-hour driving window, and the order doesn't matter. Imagine a driver who starts working at midnight, 12 a.m., after resting for 10 hours. The driver gets 11 hours of drive time and 14 hours of shift time. The driver drives for 5 hours and remains on duty for 2 hours making a total of 7 hours of shift time before taking a break. The driver takes a 3-hour break, break 1, from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. where the sleeper berth provision kicks in for the driver. The 14-hour work window, which should end at 2 p.m., has been extended by 3 hours till 5 p.m. because of break 1. After break 1, the driver would still have 7 more hours of shift left out of the 14 hours shift and 6 hours of drive time left out of the 11 hours drive limit. The driver drives for 5 more hours after break 1. Instead of working until 5 p.m., the driver chooses to take the longer break which is 7 hours long, break 2, at 3 p.m., to meet the sleeper berth rule which in this case is 3 plus 7. After break 2, the driver still has 9 hours of shift time and 6 hours of drive time. When calculating the working hours after break 2, start the 14-hour window at the end of break 1, which is 10 a.m. and exclude the 7 hours break from the calculation. This means the new 14-hour window ends at 7 a.m. on day 2 because of the split sleeper 3 plus 7 rule. By midnight on day 1, the driver stays on on duty for 1 hour and drives for 1 hour, totaling 2 hours of work on day 1 after break 2. On day 2, the driver decides to drive for 5 hours and take break 3 which is 4 hours long at 5 a.m. This, along with break 2, adds up to 11 hours, more than the required 10 hours for breaks. This will be a part of 7 plus 3 sleeper berth provision. After break 3, the driver still has 7 hours of shift time and 5 hours of drive time. At 2 p.m., the driver chooses to take a 10-hour break to restart their shift. After break 4, the driver's 11-hour and 14-hour clocks restart and haven't violated any rules. The driver can work in the sleeper berth provision until exhausting the cycle hours. To restart, a 34-hour break is needed to renew cycle hours and continue with the sleeper berth provision.